So welcome back. Uh, my name is Paul. As a lot of people know, I have a bunch of websites uh, and uh, a big YouTube section. And a lot of people have browsed around some of my playlists. Um, there's a whole bunch of interesting stuff there. I recommend people check it out. So one of the things that I like to do, I really love to learn stuff, and I'm a little bit of an older dude, so I have... Uh, you know, done a lot of reading in my life because I grew up kind of without TV and from time to time I like to just recommend people read certain books um, because there's a lot of stuff that really uh, excites your brain if you look around. Now, one of the things that really fascinates me, I like math and I like art and I like design and all that, but it can get very complicated without some imagery. So, one of the things that I've looked into over the years is something called Sacred Geometry. Now, this book is by Miranda Lundy, and it's actually a very big subject, but um, what it does, it takes math, and it makes it really simple and visualized, and it turns out that there are certain basic shapes that are common and very prevalent in nature and they, dev they um, make mathematical proportions and so on. So they've been used in a lot of art as well. So that's just one su book. Now this is actually a very small sample and its name is uh, Sacred Geometry by Miranda Lundy. And Another book that's along the same lines, Proportional Harmonics in Nature, Art and Architecture, The Power of Limits by Georgie Dodsey. Now, this is amazing because he goes really into detail, for example, showing all the proportions between animals, their wings, all the interesting mathematical proportions that are found in nature and then also incorporated into places like Stonehenge and navigation and so on. So now this book it really is a lot about just proportions and ratios in nature and math. And all these ratios, math can get really complicated but if you look at it visually and look at say the equation of a certain type of line might make a curve and or there's many different kinds of curves. So what you have is geometry unfolding through the cosmos, through stars, all the way down into our cells, our atoms, and the way everything is put together. So this is another book. Now, along the same lines, a book called Mathematics and Art by Michael Holt. Now this is a bit of an older book. goes into some of the early designs, for example, tiles, Leonardo da Vinci, different kinds of repeating patterns. A lot of stuff that now, because of computers, we're able to have these visualizations. We're able to see these things literally and physically, whereas people long ago had to really either draw them themselves or see them in their brain in sort of a meditation. Now, another really book that I really love is this guy, The Golden Thread of Time by Crichton Miller. And he did the world a great service by investigating ancient navigation. And ancient navigation was more of a maritime navigation. The reason is because the sea covers most of the earth. And at that time, and many times in history, there were no way to build really big roads. And the jungles and the trees were impassable in many cases. Uh, so... What they had to do is they had to navigate and they used the stars. And they used the stars to navigate over very large distances. And he approves this and he created a device that is and patented it and is giving it to people for use because it allows people to use celestial navigation to not only navigate but to tell the time of day, the time of year, the um, how close we are to the equinox, and even the precession of the equinoxes, which was um, something that is 
really supposedly a relatively modern, you know, discovery, but not so. He proves it here. Now, people had to navigate a long time ago, and navigation is one of my favorite subjects. And if you didn't know how to navigate by, you know, you didn't have a map, so you had to use the stars. Now, the nice thing about it is stars are very consistent. There are certain stars that are above a certain latitude, 66 degrees, for example. There's some stars in the far north that we can see year-round from most of the latitudes in the northern hemisphere. And then there's the same kind of pattern in the south. Now, because you can tell that the big, big circle of the sun of the earth rotating around that pole, they learned that they could time things. And they learned at certain times of years the winds were favorable, that the you know warmth was coming or going as the case may be, and so on. So I highly recommend that book. Now another book that is a little bit older and is very really actually unknown by a lot of people, especially modern people, uh, in the last 30 years or so. A guy named Louis Powell and Jacques Berger, Berger, both French, wrote a book that was translated from French to English called The Morning of the Magicians, a startling book, Look at Science. And he goes into how much extra sensory types of experiences and senses through a variety of means, dreams, just meditation and so on, has come into play as the civilization has grown more and more sophisticated. Now this was, this was uh, excuse me, written in the 70s, I believe. 1960. Amazing book. Now he goes into just how limited our perceptions are generally, how science over the years, you know, we go 100 years, say the 1800s, 1900s, they learn about coal, steam, but how much was rediscovery? How much did people long ago know? How smart were people long ago? What do we know? What are we missing from ancient history? A lot of these types of questions. Now, what he's talking about is that a lot of people these days, there's a lot of people born now, again, this was 1960, and now it's 50 years later. Our collective awareness on the planet Earth has wake, woken up so tremendously that indeed it was like the morning of the magicians. There's millions and millions of people on Earth right now just so full of information, knowledge, all kinds of skills. So this is a fantastic book. I have uh, been looking at it again. It's been a while since I read it. Now, I want to recommend one here. I only got a short time here, and this is I'm going to go into in more depth on another segment. But the Upanishads, one of my favorite books of all time, and this is only what's left of only a small portion of the so-called Upanishads who have been written down. But it just is amazing if you if you think about some of the things that it says in here, and just think about it, and how simple it is, how eloquent it's put how cosmic it is in implications, how profound. It's just an amazing book, and I highly recommend it. So I'm going to discuss this at, uh, later, but there, I have a segment on my YouTube section uh, with some quotes of the Upanishads and some uh, nice photos. So I'll see you in the next segment.